Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah al aziz al abim. Alladhi khalaq al insan fi ahsan taqwim. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Rabbul alameen. Wa ashadu anna nabiyyana wa sayyidana muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh. Alladhi hul mubin. Wal hadi ila sirat al mustaqim. صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. Dear respected brothers and sisters, welcome to our nightly khatira program after Isha. ولله الحمد. We want to start this process of exploring the Quran, so we will recite some ayat from during the salah. And thereafter, we'll discuss the meaning of one or more of them, so that we'll be able to develop kushur over time by understanding what we hear and what we recite, insha'Allah. And this will be quick and short, five to ten minutes, just to reflect upon something that we have recited, insha'Allah. So tonight, we recite from Surah Al-Baqarah. And I chose to recite ayat that reflect the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that reflect the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we've done several times already. So the knowledge of Allah is vast and comprehensive and we just have no way of understanding its depth and its breadth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran glimpses of how you know, magnificent and the magnitude of his knowledge. So let's talk about a perspective of knowledge that Allah mentions in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. And in the infamous Ayat al-Kursi, Subhanallah. In Ayat al-Kursi, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala states, يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم. And you see this in many places in the Quran, like Surah Al-Baqarah, and other places. And when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala actually references, like for example, the Malaika, and us too. So the concept. Of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in knowing what happens in time, whether past, present, or future. So that is a certain perspective. So in human terms or in dunya terms, the present and the past and the future sometimes intersect, especially present and the past. Subhanallah, you're gonna wonder, brother, how is that possible? How can we know the past? Yes, the past is happening right now. We just are not aware of it. Allahu Akbar. I want to tell you how because the Quran teaches us that there is a past and it is happening. Obviously, there's a present. We're in it. And there is a future that is going to happen. But the way the Quran references it, it's as if it's in the past. Allahu Akbar. And that's the beauty of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so certain it is spoken of in past tense. So, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Al-Kursi, Ayat 255. It's an ayah that has over nine major points. We're not going to delve into that. Just, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He knows what is بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ In front of them. Meaning, you know, what's happening right now. وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ And what's behind them. So there are many different dimensions to that meaning. In front of them could reference the present or what is to happen near future or far and when my khalfahum can refer to what is already in the past what they've left what they've already done so let's take that knowledge of perspective in a linear time continuum human beings see time moving forward we're born we live and we die that's a linear line so we see the past as behind us we see the future as in front of us so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aptly uses that simile. Now, my dear respected brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that the first thing Allah created was the pen. In an infamous hadith that said, Inna awwala ma khalaq Allahu al-qalam, faqala lah uktu. The first thing that Allah created was the pen. And Allah said to it, write. Then the pen responded, wa ma aktu. What should I write? Allah says, Uktubil Qadr. Write the Qadr. Wama huwa ka'inun ilal abad. And whatever will happen till the end of time. 
So you and I, from just that literal understanding of the hadith, can come to one conclusion, that part of what that pen wrote in the mother book, the mother record, which we call Allahim Mahfouf, Allah himself made it that, a lot of the information is prospective, meaning that it is to, what is to come. So it wrote information about things that have not occurred that will be set in motion. So we call that prospective looking, not retrospective looking back. There is no looking back per se in Allah Mahfouf, Wallahu A'lam, because this was the starting point of it to write what is about to occur. Now, it is possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to write some things prior to creation. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That's intrigue for us. Now, picture these brothers and sisters. So, the knowledge of Allah transmitted to a record, Allah subhanahu wa So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in essence, knows exactly everything in the future. This is proof that Allah knows everything in the future because he's already written it as a record. By the way, you and I know that Allah has assigned malaika on our right and our left. We call them, as Allah states in the Quran, kiraman katibin ya'lamuna ma ta'alun. These respectable scribes know exactly what you do. So they know the present of you and they're documenting it. You might ask, all these records that they collect that are set up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشَّمَالِ قَعِي مَا يَنْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِي So they actually take turns. They switch shifts in collecting these records. So these records are only confirmatory of what Allah already knows and Allah has already written. That's how much Allah knows. He knows exactly what each and every one of us will do. Still, nonetheless, He puts guardian angels to write what you do so that you never have a doubt your Muqiyamah that Allah knew what you will do. So that's one perspective that Allah knows the future. And likewise, Allah talks about the future in the Quran in several places but he uses past tense. That is proof from the Quran that the future is not only known to Allah, but Allah is revealing it to us. I'll give you a perfect example how the Quran tells us about the future, but it is actually in past tense, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah tells us when people enter Jannah, the believers enter Jannah. He states, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ And give glad tidings to those who believe and perform good deeds, that they will have Jannah, these gardens that rivers flow beneath. Allah says, when any time that they receive all this uh, beautiful sustenance that they get from this Jannah, they say something. So every time they have all the fruits, meats, the, you name it. The wines. Qalu, Allah says, they said, not that they say or they will say. They said, Qalu, it's past tense. This is what we had before. <laughs> Imagine that. So that is a future event Allah puts in past tense. Allah Akbar. So you see, Allah has knowledge of the future. What about the past? Well, if Allah knows the future, the past is even easier to know. But what about us? Can we human beings know the past? And that is yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a way for us to see past events. I'm not talking about historical events. I'm not talking about what happened in previous human generations and wars. No, no. I'm saying, dear respected brothers and sisters, just look up in the sky. Whatever you see there of stars, some of them are no longer there in actuality. They were born, they lived, and they died, they exploded, and gone. What you see is the remnant from the light that proceeded from them that had not reached us yet. So what you see above us, some of those objects are from the past. Even their movement 
It's like a recording from the past. Allah Akbar. And how do we know this is the past? Because Allah tells us in Surah Al-Mulk, Basar. Let your sight go back and see. Keep going back and look. You're looking at back in time when you look up in the sky. Allahu Akbar. If you were to travel to those stars, by the time you get there, you will not find them anymore. They're already gone. Allahu Akbar. So even we human beings in a, in a sama al dunya can actually take a view of the past. While to Allah, everything. There's no past for us with Allah. Everything started at a point in time. Allah knows it all and Allah wrote it down. I just wanted to give you that perspective. That this concept of past, present, and future to Allah, it's all the same. He sees it all as it is. But to us, it's a perspective. It depends where you are for you to see past. Of course, we, you live in the present and the future. You don't need to see. Allah's already told us and we'll just walk into it but my dear respected brothers and sisters i would like to conclude tonight's reflection upon something sad it saddens me and i'm sure it will sadden you it's a question if allah knows the future if allah knows everything if allah knows every possibility why do we have one chance only i don't want to explain that question I want to leave that for another khatira. Inshallah, tomorrow night, let us answer the question, why does Allah give us one chance and one only? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this life of us, the, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us take advantage of this life, our one and only chance to live a righteous life and to die in a state of tawheed and to be resurrected thereupon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pardon us here with Qiyamah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the fate of Jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit us into the Jannah that He has promised. So that way we can see all things He mentioned in the Quran in the past. We will leave them because the future to Allah is now past. We are the only ones who are waiting to see what it is, not Allah. And this is what it means to be Al Alim, the omniscient. There is no aspect of knowledge unknown to Him. And the future that we're going into is a future that Allah has already created. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah wa Brothers and sisters, I welcome you to our program. Join us here in LIC at 1507 Dodona Terrace here in Leesburg, and we will make this a continual process. We recite the Quran in Salah. We give you a meaning of it afterwards, so that way you can learn from it and you can change your lives by what you know. So brothers and sisters, have a wonderful evening. Jazakumullahu khairan. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.